Here on Wrestling Observer Live, we are here every day, Monday through Friday, New Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Well, it's Friday here in this program, you know what that means? In the second segment of the show today, we'll be joined by Dave Meltzer, talking about the big stories from the latest edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Checked out the Observer yet? Went up yesterday, last night actually, this morning. A lot of big stories in there, including updates on WrestleMania, Cody Rhodes, and more, which we will talk about on this program here as well. We have got Revolution Fallout Dynamite ratings from this past Wednesday night. We'll tell you the good and the bad of that number. As well as Jeff Hardy appearing on Rampage tonight. We have a full lineup for Rampage. No spoilers, but we will give you the lineup for that show. And also the lineup for the SmackDown show, which is whatever. It's wacky. They've been doing this a lot lately, and I don't get it, but it's the uh, it's a new WWE. They just do stuff, so we'll talk about that. We got uh, new planned matches for WrestleMania 38. I have the five matches for night one. I have the five matches for night two. All of this thus far. Updates on Matt Hardy signing an extension. And uh, a while ago... I guess I would have been in Hawaii when this happened, but uh, Filthy Tom was talking about an idea he had for for Brandy and Paige Van Zandt. Remember they started that feud and then Brandy left AEW with Cody? Well, my God, Filthy Tom's, he should have been in the prediction show. Maybe we'll finally get it. We'll talk about that here on the show today. If you want to text us, 425-780-7566 is the phone number. That is 425-780-7566. I am Brian at WrestlingObserver.com, at Brian Alvarez on Twitter, at SemperVivi as well. If you want to uh, check out SemperVivi's Twitter, and of course, we can give you a wager. my cameo is F4W Online. We'll be back in a moment, everybody. Wrestling Observer Live. So what's going on here on the uh, the YouTube chat? I hear, I hear it sucks today. Is that right? <laughs> it's not really uh, that great every day, is it? You know, I uh, I don't know what it is, but we've got a uh, we got a YouTube and we've got a Twitch, and uh, in terms of like the the intelligence of of, of those involved, I, I can't help but notice that uh, you know the the Twitch chat where people pay, and the YouTube chat where people pay, is generally significantly more intelligent than the YouTube chat that people watch for free. <laughs> okay. Why would that be? Hmm. hmm. Not sure, but uh, you know, you guys can just watch the show and not. So anyway, we would have some difficulties on the sports byline den here. What is that? I don't know. Anything else? That actually oh, might. Yeah, there will be. Don't worry. I'm not, I'm muting you for a second, Mike, because I actually think it might be your channel. It might be on my end. So if it is, uh, switch to the other channel real quick. All right, we'll handle that. Yeah, those are some horrible lines on that uh, waveform there. Well, let's get to the news while Mike switches this out here. Wednesday night's Revolution Fallout edition of Dynamite averaged 945,000 viewers on TBS, down 2.2% from last week. Lowest audience for Dynamite since moving to TBS. Shows lowest viewership overall since December 8 of last year. Dynamite did top the cha uh, cable charts with an 0.40 rating in the 18-49 to 49 demo. That's up 14.3% from last week. Ties the show's fifth highest ratings in the category since the move to TBS. Second place for the night NBA game, 0.38 rating, 18-49. Tucker Carlson. Um, Tucker Carlson. Apparently now I'm getting emails Sucks. about what's going on. Oh. Uh, yeah, I'll get to that in a moment. But anyway, let's, let's get to the, let's get to the uh, point of all of this here. So, are these, are these numbers bad? Of course not. Is being, is being first on cable bad? Of course not. Is this number great? No, it's not that great. Okay, listen. I've noticed, by the way, that uh, it appears to me that among our, our uh, listening audience, we seem to have more fans of AEW than WWE. Okay? Imagine that. So I've noticed that, you know, the, the, uh, the AEW fans are, are very, very critical of uh, of what WWE does, but I, I cannot help but notice that boy, you say anything critical about AEW, and they they sure get mad. 
I've okay. I've I've heard a little of that of late. Even though I'm allegedly paid by AW, boy, I say one even remotely even bordering on negative, and I am a horrible person that doesn't understand this business. But listen, okay. Number one on cable is great, and uh, the the demo rating a point four zero. That's that's a very good demo. All right, but. This was the this was the follow up show to AEW Revolution. You can probably count on one hand the number of of post pay per view shows that don't get a bump. Okay, ninety ninety five percent of post pay per view shows get a bump. Sometimes they get a very sizable bump if it's a show where a lot went down, and uh, you can count on probably uh, you know a couple of hands the number of times we have ever had. An AEW World Championship match for free on television, and an AEW World Tag Team Championship match free on television. And I'm not sure we've ever had an AEW World Championship match and an AEW World Tag Team title match on television on the same night. This is not the TNT title, this is not secondary. T- this is the world, and I don't want to hear who it was against, your world championship and your tag team championship. They were defended on a show that was a follow-up show to a major pay-per-view. And this show did not do a million viewers, okay? That's not like a great thing. So, is it the end of the world? No, we've gone over this a million times. Uh, Should we be writing the eulogy? Of course not. It's one week. Next week, who knows? They may do do 1.2 million. But it is notable that they had a post-revolution show with a world and tag team championship match on the same show. Debut of Jeff Hardy and more. And uh, they did 945,000 viewers. So, it's not a disaster, but, like, let's be real here, everybody. Man, I had the temerity to say they didn't break a million, and boy, did I hear it from everybody. This is not just some random run-of-the-mill show, guys. Two, your two biggest championships were defended on the show coming off Revolution. Pardon me for living. <laughs> well, maybe they should have hyped it more. Maybe they should have hyped that. And it was Thunder Rose's birthday. <laughs> it's Thunder Rose's birthday, as it as it always is in March. But uh, you know, maybe they should have actually hyped up this world title defense a lot earlier. Maybe they should have hyped up the tag match a lot earlier. And maybe they should have hit Moxley and Danielson getting together with Regal harder because. MJF wasn't on the show. Was Punk on the show? Punk have any? No, he wasn't. So your all your other stuff, maybe in hindsight, on Monday. Oh, don't forget we had a TNT title match. I mean, people, t- didn't, people didn't know it was going to be a title change, but that was a third championship match on the show. And that was announced. So you did have that as well, too, where you maybe should have hit home a lot harder and made this decision earlier so you could say... I mean, it's it's three times the goal tonight. We got to forget about just the TNT title match with Sammy, and you always know something spectacular is going to happen there. But we got a tag title match, and we got a world title match coming up and hit all of them maybe a lot harder, a lot earlier. Maybe that would have done them some good. But again, this is one rating in a vacuum that everybody freaks out about, and the ratings people are the absolute dirt worst, the ones who want to plant their flag over this and then get all emotional when somebody disagrees with them or, or any of that sort of stuff. It's the, the worst. The, the most toxic, most obnoxious of the fan bases are going to come out and say that type of nonsense, claiming what AEW is dead now, or it's just all of it is ridiculous. It's just on both sides of the, of the coin, it's terrible. We have Rampage tonight, and the lineup, Shane Strickland, Swerve's debut against Tony Nese. Don't worry, everyone, I won't spoil the results of this show, but Swerve Strickland is facing Tony Nese. Darby Allen is facing Isaiah Cassidy. No spoilers on this program. None. Keith Lee is facing QT Marshall. But you know what I'm not going to do on this show? I'm not going to spoil any of these results, everybody, because I don't do spoilers for you, the viewing audience. Scorpio Sky will do a promo. And uh, Mercedes Mercedes Martinez is facing Jamie Hayter. That's the lineup for the Rampage show coming up tonight. And, yes, Matt and Jeff Hardy. We'll be on the show in case you guys want to check out the Hardy Boys coming back to their old theme. We also have SmackDown. 
And uh, who cares? I, I don't know why yeah, you get mad. Cares. It's like I can't. It's like I can't help myself. So uh, tonight, originally it was going to be Sasha Banks versus Zelina Vega in a singles match. Okay, because we're doing a, a right now. It's a three way for the tag team titles at uh, WrestleMania, and uh, and Banks and Naomi have earned a championship match. Okay, you can see where I'm going, right? Banks and Naomi have earned a championship match. Okay? So tonight on the show, they're not doing that singles match. Tonight on the show, Banks and Naomi, who have earned a championship match, will be facing the champions in a tag team match where the titles are not on the line. Because of course that's what they're doing! So anyway, you can see... A team that has earned a championship match face the champions. But they're not allowed to have the championship belts on the line in the match with the champions tonight. That's SmackDown. What do you want out of me? Back in a moment, Observer Live. Dave Meltzer joining us here today, talking the news issue. Of the Wrestling Observer newsletter, which is available with your subscription to WrestlingObserver.com. So we just plug Wrestling Observer and we talk about the radio shows, the podcasts, the archives, 13,000 archived episodes. Well, when you sign up, you also get the Observer. And uh, I think we're still at about 40,000 words weekly, which means... More than that these we- these last few weeks. Yeah, you basically read two Observers and it's like reading Death of WCW. So if you like reading, boy, if we got... Uh, <laughs> We got the newsletter for you. Boy, there's 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 a lot the last two weeks. This has been an incredible stretch of news for sure. Well, the first thing I want to ask about quickly is at the beginning of every Observer, there's the match of the week. And I, I note that the match of the week here is John Moxley, Brian Danielson. So I presume that means that you thought that that was a better match than Shingo and Ishii. Yes, I guess that would mean that. All right, we're on the same page there. If you're if you're looking, I mean, I had a. I'll tell you what. When it comes to match of the week, I had a really tough time between that the Young Bucks match, um, Shingo and Ishii. I thought was just below those two. Honestly, um, I thought the Punk match with MJF was below that. But to the readers, the Punk and MJF match was actually voted the best match of the pay per view. Wow. Yeah, but that pay per view had a lot of candidates for best match. You know, there's it was it was down when when that Jericho and Kingston match <clears throat> and Hangman and Adam Cole match is like your whatever it was fourth and fifth best match on a pay per view. That sure says something about a pay per view because there are very few pay per views that either of those two matches wouldn't win best match um, by a lot in. Okay, so the, there are a bunch of stories here this week, but uh, the one everyone's been asking about today involves Cody. What is going on with Cody Rhodes? You know, there's still nothing. I mean, I've heard a lot of rumors, but there's nothing that I really want to talk about until I get more stuff confirmed. But I think the basic situation is this. On Monday's Raw show, if he's there, that means he's signed, obviously. If they start an angle with Seth Rollins with somebody, and it's not Cody Rhodes, that means it fell through, at least as far as that goes. Because Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins was the match that Cody Rhodes was going to debut on at WrestleMania. So there's your answer. Um, I mean, as far as, like, what he's doing, um, we don't know. I mean, it was that match was that match was considered it for sure. It was on the list, but then there was a snag in the negotiations, and I don't know where the snag, you know, where where things have come. Obviously, they've probably talked a lot since it first was a snag. So um, we'll see Monday, I guess, or maybe we'll find out before Monday. But I would say Monday at ten o'clock or at eleven o'clock when that shows over eleven o eleven, you know, um, you'll know um, one of you know you'll know if he's in. If they do nothing with Seth at all on that show and don't lead him to a direction that tells you that they expect him, but he wasn't there. And obviously, you know, if he's if he's if Seth goes with him, with somebody else, then, you know, that uh, they've given up on him for right now. And obviously that would mean that, yes, given up for right now. So, so for right now, now there's nothing. This would look, be all based. This would all be about Monday is all about whether he's facing Seth at WrestleMania. It doesn't mean that, like. If, not if Seth, yeah, starts feuding with whoever, that that he's like not coming into the company. This is just strictly for WrestleMania build Monday. 
Right, 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 right. And and there's no look, like there's no guarantee of anything. I mean, like people go like, well, could he go back to AEW? You know, of course he could. He's a star. Nobody's turning away stars right now, unless there's like political reasons. You know, I mean, as far as you know that that, that they can't come in. I mean. We're we're in a very competitive wrestling environment, and Cody Rhodes is a very valuable person, even though some people don't want to hear that. Um, and both sides would love to have him for that very reason. Well, Dave, I guess the other big news of the day is William Regal's status, which has been talked about ever since his promo on Wednesday. You wrote a little bit about it in a newsletter this week. And apparently a little bit before the show, uh, William Regal responded to some things on Twitter, I guess, as well, talking about the rumor mill and gossip about his health. Can you kind of shine a little bit of light on what his what you know about his condition right now and anything about that promo that was done on Wednesday? Okay, so on um, he will have a show. He did an interview with Chris Jericho that's going to be released on this coming Wednesday. And he goes very much into detail on, you know, what has happened to him. I mean, there's people who know stuff that happened a couple years ago that really, um, I don't know how much it got out. I mean, some of it did, but it's, he goes into detail on that. And also, I'm pretty sure he's going to go into detail on the stuff that a lot of people do know from way back, you know, when, when he had the the other issues and everything. So that's the basic situation. He said that he's healthy now, even though he did go on the air and say, um, I'm not long for this world. But he said he feels the best he's felt in a long time. And But the show goes into detail on all of his health issues. And from what I was told... Um, it's a lot of details, and it's a lot of stuff that has never come out. So that's the story. So also, we have the, the lineup and a lot of talk about, uh, about WrestleMania. And uh, in the New Observer, WrestlingObserver.com, uh, you do note that Austin has been upping his cardio of late. So I have a question for you. Yes. So it sounds, like, ridiculous on the surface, but when you think about it, it's actually not that ridiculous in a lot of ways, I think. And that is, they've announced that Steve Austin is going to be on the KO show. So it's not a match, it's going to be a, a KO show segment. And obviously, you know, all hell's going to break loose. They have announced that that is on Saturday. And WrestleMania is Saturday and Sunday. So is it possible that they advertise the KO show and they shoot an angle on the KO show to set up a WrestleMania match on Sunday, a match with Steve Austin and Kevin Owens, because in in the, like it would seem to make no sense to not announce that Steve Austin is going to be wrestling in advance. But everyone who is going to WrestleMania on Saturday is in town. You can you're still either going to go to the show the next day, or you can immediately go buy a ticket to go to the show the next day. So it's different than in the past, where if it's a one day WrestleMania, like. You know, if I find out on on SmackDown that Austin is wrestling Sunday, like I, I'm not going to get a plane ticket and fly out that quickly. So well, it's not about it's not about that. It's get, it's just about getting people to uh, to watch the show. But I mean, I know what you're saying, and is that a possibility? I mean, I don't want to say because if I say it's a possibility, then people go, "Oh, this is what you're saying. It's going to happen." I don't know. I know that what I know is this: is that um, it's not going to. You know, like a lot of people think that they're going to do a back-and-forth talking segment, and he'll kick him in the stomach and give him a stunner, and that's it. And I suppose it's possible that will happen, but my indication is is that they're they were going to do more than that. And again, I know he's upping his cardio, which tells me he's not going to kick him in the stomach and, and just do a stunner, and that's it. Um, the story we've heard is that he's he can go for a couple minutes, but, um, you know, I don't think he... I mean, they may do it that way. I mean, the the impression I have is that they didn't want to advertise a match because he didn't want it that way. Um, but we will get a physical altercation between the two. Could it happen Saturday and then build for something Sunday? If he's up for it and wants to do a match, 100% it could happen. That's up to, you know, it, it, it's, essentially it's up to what he wants to do. I mean, that's been the whole thing. Originally, this was going to be a match. And the whole thing was is that he was not comfortable with the idea of advertising a match. I think it's got to do with maybe his own professional pride of, you know, not wanting to commit to something and not having, like going out there and not having a really good match or people going afterwards, ah, you know, it only went six minutes or something, right? So everything, essentially everything is up to him and, and how he feels. 
but Dave, that like who is this for then? I, I can understand WWE wanting to have the idea of having Austin come back in a match, but like if Austin's just announced and people are, know he's going to do something, which is the stunner, I mean. At this point, I mean, was anybody really clamoring to see Steve Austin back? Is any of this for him wanting to do it, or is this no? This outside? is them, this is this is them this is them trying to put together, you know, um, you know what I mean? Like uh, the biggest WrestleMania they can, and with The Rock unavailable, Steve Austin, you know, is the the biggest star that they could bring back. So it was just like they wanted him on the show. He was always going to do something on the show anyway. But it's like, you know, how much is he willing to do? And then he's going to do exactly what he's willing to do. So as far as the rest of the, the Mania card, I mean, we got uh, five matches both nights thus far. And, uh, you know, I think one of the big questions is how long are these shows going to be? And I keep having people tell me, oh, they're not going to be as long as you think. They're not going to be as long as you think. But, I mean, it's WrestleMania, and people are flying in, and they're going in those buildings. And I just have this feeling that they're not going to do, like, these these two short shows. I think we're going to think No, 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 no. I, 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 I'm sure that they'll be three and a half hours plus. You know, like, three, you know, I, I think the idea... Actually, you know, I talked to one of the top guys in the company, and, and it was actually three and a half hours was kind of like... Because this was before they officially announced it, but remember I told you that they were definitely going to do two nights. Um, and um, it was like... The, the discussion was three and a half hours each night. That doesn't mean that they may go four, um, you know, once they get there and just feel like it. But the idea is certainly not to go more than four, put it that way. I mean, you know, three and a half hours, I think, was the optimum of what, what they were looking at, rather than six or seven, which is what they're trying to avoid by doing two shows. And uh, and quickly here, because you can uh, read it yourself in the New Observer, but uh, what's new on uh, on Ring of Honor? That's the top story this week. Well, we just kind of go through all the different possibilities. I mean, there's nothing, you know, like um, they're working through everything. They, they did the sale, you know, as, as quick as they could, and now they're trying to figure out exactly what they're going to do. And, I mean, the key is Tony Khan's going to be booking a show on April the 10th, which isn't that very far away, which is going to be a Ring of Honor pay-per-view. So, um, you know, we're going to have a, you know, and we don't have a lineup and it's going to be very tricky, um, you know, to put together a lineup. Is he going to send a whole bunch of, I, I, I would presume that there'll be a bunch of AEW guys on the show just because there's nobody like as in zero people under Ring of Honor contract. All right. Well, hold that thought. We have an end to a break, everyone. Thanks, Dave. We'll plug the Observer when we come back from the break. Wrestling Observer Live. You know, I can't help but notice. What's that? Well... Did Dynamite do a bad number this week? No. No. Nobody said did a bad number. Not at all. Do I believe that the number should have been better based on three championship matches, world tag, and coming off the pay-per-view? Yeah, I do think it should have done better. Yep. But was it bad? No. No. You know what's funny about that whole conversation I just had? What's that? Well, did you see uh, Raw Monday? Mm Mm-hmm. Or actually pretty much any Raw. (laughs) We review these uh, these Raw shows, and it's a horrible show, and then... You know, first hour did 1.8 million, second hour did 1.6, third hour collapsed to 1.53 million, and and this and that, and and I was like, oh my god, 1.53 million third hour. And you go, yeah, but it was number one on cable. That's what the WWE fans say, and people are like, yeah, but the one point, the same exact thing happened here. My god, mm-hmm. yeah. but Brian, it was number one on cable. <laughs> you know, two things can be true. The number could have been better, and it's number one cable. It's possible. These two things can both be true. No, this person, uh, yeah, I did go back on the Twitch transcripts. Fauntleroy brought them to me during the break, and I was looking through. He pounded it out. Yeah. Yes, he did. Yeah, I saw the line here from uh, Jingu going, well, how come uh, how come uh, Dynamite never got back to the 1.4 million it debuted at? Well, because it was a debut, geek. Same yes. reason SmackDown never got to the 4 million it debuted at. The debut is always going to do a giant number. You guys remember? It's like three years ago, SmackDown's debut on Fox did 4 million yeah. viewers. Where don't, well, how I, come it's never gotten back to that? Because it was never it was, gonna, because it was a debut. Well, hold on now, because that's where we disagree. What to me, that what 1.4, what the debut number always proves is that's what you got to shoot for because it always does drop from there in most cases, unless it's a big TV show or something like that. It usually does drop from there. So it gives you a goal to shoot for. That was the whole thing with getting to a million. Can they get to a million 
on a regular basis. Looked like they were going to be able to. Remember, we were saying, look, if they did 875,000, 900,000, they should probably be happy with that. Then I think they did like 1.1 million. And it's like, okay, now we know what the bar is. Now we know really what they're shooting for. They're shooting for that million. That should be what they're looking at. So to me, that 1.4 million, that should be your goal to try to shoot for. And yes, it does drop, but it does. You don't want it to drop too much. And because obviously you don't want to build, try to build back up to it. But again, everybody is freaking out about this way too much. I am sure that Turner is happy. I'm sure AEW is happy. I'm sure the sun is going to come out tomorrow. And I'm sure that people are going to be bitching and moaning when the results and ratings come out next week, regardless of what they are. So what can you do? You know, the thing is all that 1.4 million tells you is that how many that's how many people watch live that night. Yeah, they well, may have gotten true. back to the one point. In fact, they have gotten back to that one point four million many times because people watch on DVR and they watch it later. And that's and it's I not that it's not the first ever show. It's not the debut, so you don't have to watch it live. I don't watch it live. Well, Probably same thing, thing with if, SmackDown. You don't think SmackDown's got four million people watching Brian, every Friday? Of course they do. If people want to bitch about these numbers so badly, we talked about this a while back about they should not hyper focus. People should not hyper focus on these numbers every week. But if they are going to do that, at least wait a couple of days until these plus threes and plus sevens and all that stuff come out because it does give you an idea. Okay, in this environment that we're all living in right now, especially people who skew younger who do rely on DVRs and have no problem watching it on the fly on their phone if they miss it the night before and all this other stuff, like, at least that gives you a better idea from both companies of how much interest is in that product if people are getting back to it. That's why they measure plus three numbers. That's why those numbers actually matter. So maybe that's where some of the focus should be from these psychopaths that really want to plant their flag over this stuff week after week. This is the lineup for WrestleMania Night 1. Charlotte Ronda for the SmackDown Women's title. Becky Bianca for the Raw Women's title. Ray and Dominic versus Miz and Logan Paul. Drew McIntyre and Happy Corbin. And uh, Kevin Owens and Steve Austin will be doing a KO show. Night 2, Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. Pat McAfee and Austin Theory. Sami Zayn and Johnny Knoxville. AJ Styles and Edge. And we've got Carmella and Zelina versus Sasha and Naomi and Rhea and Liv. And maybe, according to the new issue of The Observer at WrestlingObserver.com, a fourth team as well. Naomi and somebody. No, Na- uh, Natalia and somebody. I don't Brian, know who that would be. Let me ask you a question. Hold on. Before you ask that question. All right. I promised I would plug it. I forgot. WrestlingObserver.com, everybody. Sign mm. up today. New Observer. 45,000 words. 45,000 words. You know, the first edition of Death of WCW was only 80,000 words. So literally, in two observers, two weeks, Dave writes more than the entire early edition, the first edition of Death of WCW. So if you're a big fan of wrestling, you like to read about it, and you want to know all the scoops before they show up on Reddit or this show, WrestlingObserver.com, read The Observer every week, plus you get 13,000 shows. You can't go wrong at WrestlingObserver.com. Whereas so if you've been on the it. chat, you actually can go wrong, Twitch or YouTube. <laughs> so he used to promote it. It's the size of a small book. That's how he used to actually promote the newsletter. Actually, actually it's much larger right than there. a small book. I read small books to my children. This is like well, the that's... entire Blast Off Reader's Backyard Animals series, all in one book. But it's about wrestling and not about wombats. Oh, <laughs> Tully Blanchard? A golden book of its own there. But Now, what's uh, your question? I can't even remember what it was now. Great question. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you what I was thinking. I brought up that thing with Dave about how, uh, you know, what if Steve Austin does a thing and then does the match the next night? Uh-huh. Uh, listen, you idiots, I'm not reporting that. I'm asking a question. Because to me, and I could be wrong here, I look at these two cards, and uh, night one is much stronger. So why isn't Austin on night two? That's the card that I think needs more help. I mean, unless you're, like, so into seeing the 95th Roman Reigns-Brock Lesnar match. I mean, the only other big match, really, on that night is AJ and Edge. That'll be a great match. And that's, see, that, to me, that's the reason why, because Brock and Lesnar or, or Brock and Reigns are on that show. That's actually where I would want Austin, you know, for that second night, just to have them with him. I, I, I don't know. To me, that flows a lot better than to have it, but maybe they have some sort of big idea. Who knows? Maybe it chains big return. Matt Hardy has announced a contract extension. Good timing. 
Think he was going to say no? It would have been funny if his brother showed up and then he left. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> I never liked that guy anyway. Cody, what are we doing now? So anyway, they've, uh, they're going to be around for a while. I'm very happy to extend my contract with AEW, said Hardy. I'm going to be there a little while longer, and they matched myself and Jeff's contracts up, which is very cool. <laughs> what does that mean? It means they're making the same money. Okay. Or no, they're probably leaving at the same time. Ah. That would be nice. It's actually way too nice for me to be. I would, why would you want to give that leverage up? Actually, for Tony, I guess it doesn't matter. It doesn't care. Who cares, I guess. But uh, there you go. Let's see. Again, the the promotion that I guess wrestlers want to work for, AEW, certainly, uh, certainly a little easier to deal with than Vince, I guess, right now. We also got this page. Van Zant's bare-knuckle fighting career is not over yet. The 27-year-old still expected to continue competing for bare-knuckle fighting championships. She has fought twice for the promotion. Page is still under contract. BKFC, officials said. BKFC. That's my type of fighting promotion. Companies will work together to build her career. Yeah, the company is going to work together to build her career. So filthy I think she's might doing all right. Filthy might be all right. He might be right in the end. What? Paige Van Zant and Brandy for bare knuckle fighting. Oh my! Wasn't god. Wasn't that his idea? I may have been. Now they can do it. Certainly one of his ideas for the two of them, surely. But uh, I don't. Her. Let me tell you something. Her punches then in that case better look real damn good. You know what I'm saying? I, I, she better be knocking out Red Velvet with one shot if she's up there bare-knuckle fighting. And granted, I know she hasn't won a fight yet, but you're bare-knuckle fighting, so your fists better look real good if you're going to throw punches. Otherwise, you better result, like, resort to forearms and teaching her elbows. And th- well, actually, maybe not elbows, too, for somebody who's untrained. But, you know, forearms and things like that, then, because if her punches suck, that's going to be real disappointing. Oh, man, everyone's talking about KFC. Well, you want me to talk about KFC? Because I could talk about KFC for a while. You haven't switched to Popeyes? So uh, this person here says, Burger King and KFC sounds like a heart attack waiting to happen. You want to hear about a heart attack waiting to happen? Yeah. KFC used to have this sandwich. I don't know. I don't think they have anymore because I haven't been there forever. Of oh, the Double Down? I think it was called the Double Down. Yeah. It, was a, yeah. it was a chicken sandwich. You guys know what a chicken sandwich is? <laughs> mm-hmm. Love them. It's a sandwich with chicken in it. Okay? Mm-hmm. So what's a sandwich? Well, oh. it's uh, it's uh, bread with stuff in the middle. Not the double down. This was a chicken sandwich where instead of bread, instead of a bun, they used chicken. So it was fried chicken with fried chicken in the middle of it. Double down. I went and ate one once. Really? I sure did. But that was the uh, that was the double down. And then the other thing, I hate to uh, break kayfabe here, but it is a wrestling show, so I'm going to break kayfabe for all of you. You ever gotten a Kentucky Fried Chicken? They talk about the 11 herbs and spices. Yeah. All right. Well, when I was younger, you know, back when you had to go to the to the bookstore to get a book, they didn't have Kindles or anything. They had a series of books, and it was called, the first one was called Big Secrets. And then there was Bigger Secrets. <laughs> and then the last one was, you want to guess? Yes. Biggest Secrets. Okay. Ah. So there were all these secrets in there, okay? So, you know, think of a secret, whatever, you know. Uh, anyway, one of the secrets was, what is the secret recipe KFC's 11 herbs and spices? Because they always claim that they had a secret recipe, 11 herbs and spices, okay? <laughs> so uh, big, bigger, biggest secrets, whatever it was, they were going to figure out the secret. What is the secret recipe? 11 herbs and and spices to make Kentucky Fried Chicken taste so good. So what they did was they went and they got Kentucky Fried Chicken, and they uh, they took the the breading off, and they sent it to a food lab. Broke it down, or they broke it down into its, uh, you know, atoms or whatever. I don't know how oh, those yeah. things work. But anyway, then they examined it so that they could find out what are the secret eleven herbs and spices that make Kentucky Fried Chicken taste so good. Mm-hmm. You ready, everybody? Ready. Salt. Mm-hmm. And pepper. Okay. That's it. And? That's all they found. Wait, what? That's all they found. That's it. Yep. It's a it's a gimmick. Damn. There are there are not eleven herbs and spices. You're telling me there's they no put, tarragon? They put salt and pepper and they deep fry it. 
That's no the, paprika. No, it was it was uh, it was like See? salt and pepper. That's why KFC is so whack, and you should go to Popeyes. Although you should really just make your own chicken and do it the right way, and add Old Bay. That's really the secret ingredient for you want good fried chicken. You got to put Old Bay, real Old Bay, not any of that stuff that says it's like Chesapeake Bay seasoning. No, you got to put real Old Bay in there. Trust me. That's how you do it. Now, if you're from Kentucky Fried Chicken, don't get mad at me, brother. If if you're mad, it's either big, bigger, or biggest secrets. I forget which one. Or you can go to that whatever franchise they got that chicken from. Maybe they'd run out of the 11 herbs and spices that day. That might have been what happened. See, when I was younger, I remember the, the big secret was what's in Coke, especially after oh, New that was Coke in there. came out. It was like, what, what's the proprietary yeah, ingredient they, that they, they had tried to uh, They tried to figure out. I, I, if I recall correctly, they didn't figure that one out. That one was That one was too secret. But uh, they did, uh, you know, I learned a lot about Coke. Like, uh, allegedly, allegedly, there's only two people that know the actual formula for Coke at any yeah. given time. That's, I've so heard that. They're never allowed to be together in the same place. They're not allowed to fly on the same plane. It's like, it's nuclear codes. Exactly, exactly. It's crazy. Did you know that, everybody? Yeah, that's, that was... It's what we yeah. learned back in the day when we were outside. You kids are always inside right now. We were outside. Not only were we causing trouble and living life, we were learning. And missing breaks. Too. Learning. Back in a moment, Observer Live. I know we've run off all the listeners because everyone's out getting chicken now. I really want some, too. But if you're here for the final two minutes, this person here says, Do you think they are turning the dark order after that segment with Hangman? I can't imagine they would, but they seemed hurt that Hangman did not pick them to tag with him. Well, quite frankly, everybody... I realize that uh, the Dark Order uh, may end up being career baby faces. But at the end of the day, they're the Dark Order. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they've turned a lot of people heel in the history of wrestling. And, you know, maybe maybe it's time for them to go heel. Or maybe not. Maybe they'll never be booed. It's hard to say. Hey, you know, I don't think maybe... it's impossible. Let's put it that way. Maybe it is, but in that realm, look, the Young Bucks didn't help Kenny Omega because they didn't want to go against Hangman. But the way it looks is Omega's going to come back and team with them, and they didn't turn babyface. Same thing with the Dark Order. Maybe they're not there for Hangman, and maybe that disappoints some people. But, you know, there's there's some storyline that they can play where they don't have to be bad guys. And if they are, then maybe it's time to split off 10. Know what I mean? Ten or Anna J in that case maybe ought to go to the other side. Well, I mean, I, if you're going to turn him heel, bro, I think so. You never, you never taught kids. What? Yeah. What? Well, that little I'm bro trying. can be I'm a trying, heel, brother. Trust me. I'm Trust trying. me. Ten can be a heel right now, or or, or negative one. Well, well, let me tell you. I don't know about ten. I can tell you right now, fourteen. That's a heel. That is a all heel, all day, all night heel. Yeah. Fourteen. Deal with it, brother. Oh, you did. You got double coming for you, brother. Oh, I'm I'm well aware. I'm gonna, see. I'm gonna worry about it when the time comes. Not now. Mm. Now they're really cute. Yeah, I gotta worry. So was mine. Yeah. Look at look at it so now. I'm gonna enjoy it while I can. Look, just like his mother. Wild. I'll Something turn. Wrong I'll with turn. Him. Uh, my hair will turn totally <laughs> white later. We're out of time. Thanks, Mike. As always, callers and listeners, everyone in the studio, go eat some chicken. Wrestling Observer Live.